Hi, Pat Duga. In this screencast, we're going to introduce the base of E, the important concept of E, and its inverse, the natural logarithm. We're going to use that once we've learned about the concept to solve exponential equations and inequalities using those natural logarithms. We're going to look at this number, this special number called Euler's number, which is E, which is approximately a value of 2.71. E is used for many, many things, but one of its most important uses is in a function that models continuous exponential growth or decay, which is important for many applications. Uh, the function f of x e equals e to the x power is used for growth, and f of x equals e to the minus x is used for continuous decay. On the left side, this blue function is the graph of f of x equals e to the x. Its inverse is the logarithm. The, and it's called the natural logarithm, and it's written as ln. So ln of x is a special logarithm that has a base of e. So instead of writing it as log base e of x, we write it as ln x. And you can see this natural logarithm with the base of e is the inverse of e to the x. For exponential decay, e to the minus x looks like the blue curve on the right continuously decreasing as we move off towards the right, towards positive infinity. Its inverse, also with the base of e, is the function f of x equals negative the natural log of x. Write an equivalent logarithmic equation for e to the x equals 23. So e to the x equals 23 can be written as log base e of 23 equals x, but actually the convention is to write it as natural log of 23 equals x. So again, instead of writing log base e, we write it as log natural or the natural log. And we can evaluate that on our calculators. There's a special button for the natural log. And it appears right under the log button. Remember in a previous screencast, we talked about the log base 10. Well, the natural log is such an important base, it has its own button as well. So the natural log of 23 would be the power of e, which is about 2.71, raised to what power would give me 23? And in fact, that number is approximately 3.315. Let's write an equivalent logarithmic equation for e to the fourth equals x. Let's write an equivalent logarithmic equation for e to the fourth equals x. So e to the fourth equals x can be written as the log base e of x equals 4, but again, we're not going to use that notation, we're going to write log base e as a natural log. So this becomes the natural log of x equals 4. So writing natural logs in exponential form just reverses that process. Natural log of x approximately equal to 1.2528 can be written as log base e of x equals 1.2528 but we're going to write that in exponential form as x equals e to the 1.2528 power. Whenever you see natural log, your base is e. Let's write the natural log of 25 equals x in exponential form. So the natural log of 25 equals x can be written as log base e of 25 equals x. But in exponential form, that's 25 equals e to the x. e to the x power equals 25. Let's do some simplifications of expressions with e and the natural log. We're going to rewrite uh, 4 times the natural log of 3 plus the natural log of 6 as a single logarithm. So using the power property of logarithms, 4 times the natural log of 3 can be written as the natural log of 3 to the 4th. And uh, we can't really do anything with the natural log of 6 by itself. So 4 times the natural log of 3 plus the natural log of 6 winds up being the natural log of 3 to the 4th plus the natural log of 6. Now using the product property, because these two natural logarithms have the same base of e, we can rewrite the natural log of 3 to the 4th plus the natural log of 6 as the natural log of 3 to the 4th times 6 or the natural log of 486, which we can evaluate on our calculators. The natural log of 486 
is approximately 6.186. Let's look at another example. Rewriting 2 times the natural log of 3 plus the natural log of 4 plus the natural log of y as a single logarithm. So we're going to use this properties of logarithms to rewrite this. Using the power property, 2 times the natural log of 3 becomes the natural log of 3 to the second power, or the natural log of 9. Since they are all added to each other, and by the way, if they were subtracted, that would be a quotient rule, but since they're all added, we have the product property of logarithms. So the natural log of 9 plus the natural log of 4 plus the natural log of y is equal to the natural log of 9 times 4 times y, or the natural log of 36 y. Let's use natural logarithms to solve base e equations, which are quite common because e is such an important concept uh, in our universe. Solve 3e to the minus 2x power plus 4 equals 10. Now what we need to do here is get rid of everything on the left hand side that doesn't involve the e term. So we're going to clear that by subtracting 4 first. When we do that, 3e to the minus 2x equals 6. The next thing we're going to do is divide by 3. Again, we're isolating the e. When we divide by 3, we get e to the minus 2x power equals 2. 6 divided by 3 is 2. Now it's time to use natural logarithms. We're going to take the, the natural log of both sides. So this becomes the natural log of e to the minus 2x equals the natural log of 2. Well, the natural log of e to the minus 2x can be rewritten using the product can be rewritten using the power property of logarithms as minus 2x natural log of e equals natural log of 2. And the natural log of e is 1 because the natural log has a base of e, e to the first power equals e. That's an important concept to remember that the natural log of e is 1. So using that inverse property of exponents and logarithms, minus 2x equals the natural log of 2. Now we're going to divide both sides by negative 2. And x is going to be equal to the natural log of 2 divided by negative 2. Using the ti, the natural log of 2 divided by 2 is easy to evaluate. It's the natural log of 2 divided by negative 2. And that's going to give us negative 0.3466 to the fourth decimal place. Let's go ahead and solve a natural log equation using the concept of e and the natural log. So we're going to try to solve 2 times the natural log of 5x equals 6. First thing we're going to do is divide both sides by 2. And that gives us the natural log of 5x equals 3. Now because we have a natural log, we're going to raise e to both of those powers. So instead of natural log of 5x equals 3, we can rewrite this as raising e to the natural log of 5x power equals e to the third power. e to the natural log of 5x becomes 5x because e to the natural log of anything is going to wind up being that anything because what happens is we have the e and the natural log as inverses of each other and they cancel each other out. So what happens in this case, we get 5x equals e to the third power because e to the natural log of anything is that thing. This is great. We're now just a couple of steps away. Divide both sides by 5. You get x equals e to the third divided by 5, which we can use our calculator to find. And notice right above on the TI calculator, above the natural log is e to the x power. They are inverses of each other, just like log and 10 to the x power are inverses of each other as well. So we're going to write, we're going to go e, which is second natural log, 
You notice it says e to whatever power, in this case the third power. We have to use a right arrow, and then we're going to go divided by 5. So this is e to the third divided by 5, which is approximately 4.0171, taking it to four decimal places. Let's solve the inequality, natural log of 3x plus 1 to the second power greater than 8. So again, we're trying to isolate the natural log. Uh, we're going to use some of the properties of the natural log. So what we're going to do is we're going to raise e to both um, powers. e to the natural log of 3x plus 1 quantity squared greater than e to the 8th power. Now we're going to use the fact that e to the nat natural log of x equals x to get rid of the e in the natural log. And so what we wind up with on the left-hand side of the inequality is 3x plus 1 squared greater than e to the 8th, which can be written as e to the 4th squared. The whole point of this is to get both of them squared. Since they're both uh, raised to the same power, we get 3x plus 1 greater than e to the 4th. You could have also taken the square root of both sides. 3x plus 1 greater than e to the 4th. Next thing I'm going to do is subtract 1 from both sides, which gives me 3x greater than e to the 4th minus 1. Now we're going to divide both sides by 3, which gives us our answer x greater than e to the 4th minus 1 over 3, or using a calculator, x greater than 17.8661. Let's look at one of the most important uses of E, and that's in the financial world, to calculate what's called continuously compounding interest. <clears throat> and that it uses the formula A equals PE to the RT power, all, also known as PERT. A is the amount, P is the principal or the starting amount, and E, of course, is our famous Euler number E, raised to the R times T power, where R is the rate, and T is the time period. Let's look at an example of continuous compounding using PERT. Let's say you deposit $700 into an account that pays a 3% annual interest and it's compounded continuously. What is the balance of that account after eight years? So we're going to use that formula of PERT. $700 is our starting amount, the principal. The rate is 3%, which as a decimal is 0.03, and we're looking at doing this for eight years. When we multiply 0 0.03 times eight, we get 0.24. So we have 700 times e to the 0.24, which on our calculator works out to about $889.87. This screencast looked at the base of e and its inverse, the natural logarithm, and we use the e to the x and the natural logarithm to be able to solve exponential equations and inequalities and we introduce the formula for the compound uh, continuous interest using the PERT formula.